up the Smala from the Seattle Electric Bike Shop over by Green Lake and riding it home now, very wet. Uh, good thing it comes with fenders. e-bike commuting. Today's video is about the Smalo LX2 e-bike. Uh, Smalo reached out to me at the beginning of the year and offered to send me a bike. I'm here to give you my thoughts on it, both the good, the bad, and yes, the ugly. Smalo is a new brand from a larger conglomerate called BESV, um, which is a company based out of Asia that makes a bunch of different uh, electronic products. So they definitely have a lot of knowledge when it comes to making uh, electronic systems. First, let's get into the good um, of the LX2. So first thing, I like the design of it. I think the geometry of it wasn't very comfortable to ride. I really liked the sleek look of it with everything being really well integrated, the integrated lights. It reminded me a lot of the Wing Freedom uh, e-bikes as well as the Van Moof e-bikes. And so it's a great urban, commuter e-bike in that sense. I can see it appealing to a younger demographic, um, you know, people who are in their 20s, in the city, live in an apartment, and want an e-bike. It comes with some thick tires that, you know, added a lot of comfort on the ride and made it relatively smooth. Um, so that's a positive. The 504 watt hour battery gives it a advertised range of like 70 plus miles. And I think this is actually pretty accurate because I rode a fair amount on it and barely used any of the battery. Uh, maybe it's probably closer to like 50 miles if you're using the boost mode a lot and going up a lot of hills, but um, I was impressed with the range that it had. But there's actually, I think, a, I have a theory for why that range is so good. Um, and it's actually not a good thing. Uh, it's not a good reason um, why they're actually able to achieve that range. So um, I'm gonna I'll share that when I get to the bad, ugly part of, of this review. Another thing I really, I was impressed by was their companion app that comes with the bike. It has like location tracking, a um, bunch of stats about it. You can actually calibrate different features of the bike on it, um, change a bunch of settings. So I was impressed with that. Uh, it also has a remote lock unlock. You push down on the top of the lock that's on the back and that pushes out a little bolt that then uh, keeps the wheel from spinning. <laughs> It also comes with like an anti-theft alert. When you have it enabled and the bike moves, uh, either the horn makes a noise or you get an alert on the app. I tried turning this on and moving the bike, but it didn't work. And potentially that was because the Bluetooth on the phone knew I was so close to the bike that it knew I was moving it, not someone else. So when you get back to the bike, you walk up to it, you open the app and press unlock, and very quickly it uh, unlocks the, the rear wheel lock. So uh, I was actually impressed with that. I thought that was a cool, cool feature. Uh, one thing on the good side, you know, they're not uh, UL certified. They did, Smalo did say they are working towards that certification, but they do have the European um, certification for their bikes, uh, which includes not just the electrical system, but also the whole bike in general. So um, you can be confident that the bike itself is going to uh, be reliable and um, be up to a certain safety standard. All right. Now let's talk about the bad. Um, we'll get to the ugly in a little bit, but now we're just going to talk about the things things I thought were um, just a little under par. First was rain fender coverage was not great. It does come with rain fenders, which is good, but the, the, they did not go down very far. So ended up, I, when I picked up the bike, it was raining pretty hard and I just got soaked. Uh, feet got soaked. Um, luckily I had a fair amount of rain gear on, but uh, as someone who rides a lot in Seattle, I really value bikes that have good rain fenders. It also comes with a little horn feature. Um, here, I'll play a little clip of me honking the horn. I actually didn't like having a horn. I thought it was a little uh, too aggressive when I was passing people on the multi-use trail when I used it. Um, I got some looks from people where they're just like, really, you know, why are you honking at me? You know, the horns are used often by motorists when they're upset with someone. So. Um, I think if it had like a little more friendly, like, I don't know, like a clown car horn or something, like a little klaxon, that could have been a little more fun um, and a lighter way to like get someone's attention. Um, uh, in the end, I started using the bell more often just when I wanted to pass people because I found that horn uh, just kind of gave off bad vibes, I would say, and just, I didn't, didn't like it. Interesting uh, choice here that Smalo made was that the, uh, 
instead of going with like a belt drive, they went with a chain drive and then it is covered with this guard. But I think with that approach, like it just makes it difficult to clean and maintain the chain because there's a guard blocking it. You know, it, it still is gonna get wet, like water is gonna get in there, dirt, debris will get in there even if you have this guard on. So if you need to clean or oil the chain, which you should do semi-regularly on a bike, uh, you're gonna have to take off that guard and that's just a pain to, to deal with. So a bit surprised they didn't just go with a belt drive. Uh, I don't think that would have changed their costs too much. All right, now let's get to the ugly. So it comes with a 250 watt front hub motor. And I just found that motor to be completely suboptimal. Like it just didn't give enough power. The bike has a boost mode. At least it advertises a little boost mode and there's a button on the handle uh, on the right side that you can press to give it a boost. And to be honest, I couldn't even tell when the boost was on. I think the boost mode only works if you're pedaling. So it's not like a traditional throttle where you can just um, be at a standstill and press it and start to feel the acceleration. It really only kicks in when you're pedaling. Um, and that, like, I, I just don't really like that approach because you're already getting power from pedaling. So it's almost like just going from, let's say, a pedal assist level two up to a pedal assist level three. You're just telling the motor to give you more power. And it, it wasn't like a big boost. Like, I almost couldn't at times, couldn't even tell if it was going or not. So yeah, going back to what I said earlier about the range. Yeah, I think you can get 50, 60 miles on a single charge on this bike, but not, not because the battery is so good. It's just because the motor just doesn't use much power like it doesn't give you much power you know it's not a proprietary motor it is a buffang buffang i don't know how to pronounce it but a buffang mo motor so i was expecting something with a little more oomph to it um so yeah that just was disappointing the final thing that i didn't like about the lx2 was the automatic shifting it's advertised as you know an ai driven smart future e-bike, futuristic e-bike, right? It, it, it was laughable. So I've used automatic shifting um, on other e-bikes. So the Enviolo automatic shifting comes to mind and they worked pretty seamlessly. Um, this one does not work seamlessly at all. Just the whole pedaling shifting experience um, was poor in two ways. The first issue was that um, it would skip gears. It has about, I think like seven or eight gears as, and it just like clicks through them as you go. Um, and I think it was like on gear six, they'd like just kept skipping and missing that gear. So you're, you know, you're pedaling relatively normally. Here's a video of me pedaling up a slight incline and you're going and as it shifts from automatically, it starts shifting as you pedal, you know, it goes from gear four to gear five then it hits gear six and that the pedals just spin almost uncontrollably. My feet almost slipped off on the first time I was going because it had been, it was so wet out. My feet were already kind of a little slippery on the pedals. That made it almost unrideable at times. Um, you just, you literally couldn't, stand and pedal or something because it, it would always like miss a gear. That's less of this AI driven platform and more of just like an issue with the rear shifting system. So um, I reached out to Smolo. Uh, they said, you know, you could take it to a repair shop to get repaired or adjusted. They're not proprietary components. So in theory, a bike shop could do that. Um, also, you could send, I could send the rear hub to Smolo to fix. Um, and then they also uh, have a adjuster in the app where you can actually adjust the gearing. You can kind of line up this little yellow line um, and then you reset the gearing tension, I think, in it and kind of the alignment of the gears. I did that and it, it changed it slightly, but not really. And then the second piece, the second piece of like just the, the shifting riding experience that was pretty bad was this AI smart shifting. As you pedal, it was always trying to kind of keep you at a certain cadence, right? Which is fine. That's what the Enviola automatic shifter does. In the Enviola app, you set, I want to pedal at 85 RPM. Um, the small app doesn't let you just specify this. At least I didn't find it in the settings. And instead of keeping you at like 70 or 80, maybe 90 RPM, which I find would be pretty comfortable riding along at 75 or 80 pedal revolutions per minute, I, I could have sworn it was like trying to keep me at 40 or something. like. I'd be going by a slight incline, you know, already pedaling kind of slow, and it just would keep downshifting until I was like barely crawling along. Like it was laughable. I was like, how am I supposed to be pedaling this? Like, it's like it wants you to be like slow motion pedaling or something. As I'm going up this hill, I'm pedaling and it's like keeps downshifting. So I keep going slower and slower. And I finally stop, get off the bike and pause just because I'm like, all right, this was a pain. And instead of uh, keeping it in the same gear, I'm not moving, mind you. Uh, it just starts shifting back up to the center, up to gear four, which uh, 
I don't know why it does that. Maybe it thinks like, oh, anytime you start pedaling, you know, start riding the bike, you should be in the middle gear. Fine, but I'm on a big, big hill and it just shifted me to the middle gear. It made it then impossible to get going. There's so much tension in the system, it wouldn't actually shift. So uh, I, I was essentially stuck in that gear four. Um, so yeah, that just was, uh, yeah, made it very challenging. I think if you're on flat, the flat city roads is yeah, it'd be fine. Um, but yeah, it's not, not calibrated for hill hills by any means. And what's kind of funny about that whole system was, uh, it has, you know, it has a, a th plus button and a minus button. So you can kind of move through the gears yourself, but it's elec an electronic system that was super slow and delayed. So I would press it down and it would, you know, take a couple seconds and then it would shift down you press down and it would shift again. So you couldn't like quickly, like you could on a regular traditional mechanical shifting where you like just trigger shift quickly, jump through gears. You can't do that. Um, so it actually makes a noise when it successfully shifts and then a little like clunking noise when it doesn't shift. Um, here's a little clip of me trying to do it. Pretty much every other time I click down, it has an issue shifting. So the AI shifting was just, just not great. Um, so I, I really hope that they, you know, spend more time and figure that out. Um, like if you just got rid of the AI shifting and you just had a normal shifting system, the bike would actually be pretty good. Um, so yeah, I think that's honestly the biggest thing holding this bike back and keeping me from recommending it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and I've got a, a few other bikes sitting in my garage here that I'm going to be writing reviews on. So um, subscribe and uh, see you see you out there.